Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about the structure and the functions of human brain. So normally, you know about the brain, right? It is a site of information where it helps in the processing and control. And processing is nothing but the type of information which you carry out. And control is nothing but, uh, you know, controlling the human body, human system. Okay. And that's the main function of the brain. And normally, this brain is protected in the cranial cavity by the three cranial meninges. And the three meninges are, meninges is nothing but membranes. By three membranes. And the three membranes or three meninges are outer dura matter, middle arcanoid matter and inner pia matter pia matter okay uh, so these are the three meninges important membranes which are present in this cranial cavity in the brain so normally this brain is also called as encephalon and this encephalon consists of three parts i mean that brain consists of three parts there are forebrain midbrain and hindbrain so in this video i'm going to explain to you about the brief explanation on the forebrain midbrain as well as the hindbrain so firstly let us discuss about the forebrain normally normally forebrain consists of uh, three parts and before entering into the forebrain the other name of the forebrain is called prosencephalon and this forebrain consists of three parts they are olfactory bulbs cerebrum and the diencephalon so firstly let us discuss about the olfactory bulbs and this olfactory bulbs will uh, you know will it covers the anterior region of the brain it covers the anterior region of the brain it is present at the anterior region of the brain and normally these olfactory bulbs helps in the receiving the impulses which are related to the smell from the olfactory epithelium of the nasal chamber you know about the nasal chamber right so uh, if you understand the respiratory system which i explained in my previous videos then you can understand about the nasal chamber which is present at the part of the nose inside and this nasal chamber consists of olfactory epithelium and when you send when you for example if you sense a smell of sweet then you can recognize that it is a sweet smell only because of the olfactory bulbs which is present at the brain which is which, which is present at the brain so this olfactory bulbs consists of olfactory receptors and the receptors will receive the signals from the olfactory epithelium that smell signals will receive by this all uh, by this olfactory receptors which are present in the olfactory bulbs then you can understand that or else then you can recognize that it is a sweet smell or else it is a hot smell okay and next coming to the cerebrum second one cerebrum and the cerebrum uh, this occupies a major part of the brain and normally this cerebrum when it undergoes longitudinal division and here median longitudinal fissure is nothing but a longitudinal division which occurs in the cerebrum so when the longitudinal division or as median longitudinal fissure takes place in the cerebrum then it gets divided into right and left cerebral hemispheres and this right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere will get connected with myelinated nerve fibers and these nerve fibers are called as corpus callosum or else it is also called as colossal commissure i have mentioned here myelinated nerve fibers because it is it consists of myelin sheath you know about the myelin sheath and if you understand the video of neurons in my in my playlist then you can understand about this nerve fibers so this nerve fibers plays a major role to connect right cerebral hemispheres as well as the left cerebral hemisphere and these nerve fibers are called as corpus callosum or as it is also known as collateral commissure so normally this cerebrum consists of gray matter as well as the white matter and normally when the gray matter is layered on the cerebrum then that layer is said to be as cerebral cortex cerebral cortex and this, remember the cerebral cortex is gray region is gray in color okay and this cerebral cortex consists of more number of neurons you know about the neurons right neurons plays a major role in the brain it, 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 it this mainly helps in the functioning of the brain and to understand about the neurons i already made a video on this and the link will be given in the description box you can watch that video so remember here the cerebral cortex consists of more number of neurons and it is gray in color and the cerebral cortex also consists of many folds which are known as gyri and this cerebral cortex consists of many areas like sensory areas motor areas and memory areas and here sensory areas is nothing but sensing like you know sensing of smell or a sensing of taste or a sensing of any uh, thing like you know if you sense uh, for example if you if you take a bench and you can uh, you can sense that it is a bench because of this sensory areas which are present in the cerebral cortex of cerebrum and motor areas is nothing but muscle functions and here for example if you see a snake then immediately you will run and for running for running process you need the strength of the muscle right and that muscle action will be taken by this motor areas which are present in the cerebral cortex of cerebrum which is present in the brain and memory areas memory areas is nothing but remembering the information Mem uh, you know storage of the information will be taken place by this memory areas which and this three areas sensory areas as well as the motor areas and memory areas are present in the cerebral cortex and remember the cerebral cortex consists of 
neurons so because of the neurons because of the functions of neurons only these three areas will get function so coming to the cerebral medulla cerebral medulla is nothing but uh, the white matter so i have said you that the cerebrum consists of gray matter as well as the white matter right so the gray matter is nothing but cerebral cortex and the white matter is nothing but cerebral medulla and remember here the cerebral medulla consists of myelinated axons and the cerebral hemisphere he is cerebral hemisphere because i have mentioned you there cerebrum will get divided into right and left cerebral hemisphere so i have mentioned here each cerebral hemisphere so each cerebral hemisphere consists of four lobes there are frontal lobe temporal lobe parietal lobe and occipital lobe so totally eight lobes will be present because i have mentioned here each cerebral hemisphere because there are two two cerebral hemispheres there are left cerebral hemisphere and right right cerebral hemisphere so each of the cerebral hemisphere consists of four lobes so two into four eight lobes so these are the lobes which are present on the brain sorry cerebrum region of the brain so coming to the third region which is known as diencephalon so we have discussed this four four brain consists of three parts they are olfactory bulbs the cerebrum and the diencephalon so we completed about the olfactory bulbs and we completed about the cerebrum so now let us discuss about the dien so if you see in the diagram of the brain these are the lobes frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe and if you see here this parietal lobe and occipital lobe will get connected with parietal occipital sulcus okay and coming to the diencephalon region this diencephalon is also called as thalamencephalon because it is made up of thalamus so if you see here this thalamus region is known as diencephalon okay and this diencephalon region is get divided into three main parts they are epithalamus thalamus and hypothalamus based upon the thalamus okay and coming to this epithalamus this epithalamus it covers the roof of the diencephalon roof region i mean upper region of the diencephalon okay so this is non nervous because uh, because there are neurons are absent neurons are absent in this epithalamus region of diencephalon and these are fused with pyometer so pyometer is nothing but i have said you in the introduction part it consists of three membrane like in the beginning itself i have said you write out outer dura mater middle arcana mater and inner pyometer so this will be fused with the pyometer okay so this epithalamus will be fused with pyometer and when it fused with pyometer then it forms anterior choroid plexus and normally this epithalamus consists of endocrine gland so coming to the thalamus region and this thalamus region it is superior to the midbrain that's nothing but it is uh, it is at the region of the midbrain and here what is the major function of this thalamus is that it helps in the it helps as a coordinating center for sms sms is nothing but sensory and motor signaling okay and coming to this hypothalamus third region so we have discussed about the epithalamus thalamus and now hypothalamus and coming to this hypothalamus this hypothalamus is present just below the thalamus if you see here in the diagram this is the hypothalamus region this is the thalamus region right and below the thalamus region there is a presence of hypothalamus okay and remember here this hypothalamus the, from this hypothalamus infundibulum will be arrested and infundibulum is nothing but it is a you know it is a it is a funnel shaped like structure for example if you see in the diagram so see here in the diagram this is a funnel shaped like this which will be arrested from the hypothalamus and this funnel shaped like structure is known as infundibulum so this is known as infundibulum and remember here one of the important thing which you have to remember is that this hypothalamus and infundibulum will be connected with pituitary gland like endocrine gland okay and normally this hypothalamus helps in the secretion of hypothalamic hormones and this hypothalamus consists of centers like osmoregulatory centers thermoregulatory centers thirst hunger and satiety centers you know uh, it helps uh, you know it recognizes the functions of osmoregulation thermoregulation thermoregulation is nothing but uh, you know feeling the temperature feeling the temperature of outside like you know feeling it like hot or else cold you know that type of temperature you can feel only because of the sensing receptors which are present in the thermoregulatory centers which are present in the hypothalamus region of brain and you can feel the thirst you can feel the hungry hung, hungry nature okay hungry emotion you can feel that type of emotions and satisfy satisfy nothing but satisfaction feeling very satisfaction uh, you know feeling satisfaction is also one of the type of emotion right and that of all, all that of feelings can be sensed by this hypothalamus region only so coming to the mid region mid brain you know so finally we have discussed about the four brain right so now let us discuss about the mid brain and this mid brain is also named as or else it is also called as mesencephalon okay so normally how the way from where this midbrain is present between thalamus of the forebrain and between the you know between thalamus of the forebrain and pons where only this midbrain is present so remember this word thalamus of the forebrain thalamus of the forebrain is nothing but diencephalon right previously what i have explained you in the diencephalon it is also called as thalamencephalon because it is made up of thalamus right 
so here i have mentioned you here thalamus of forebrain so that's something but diencephalon so between diencephalon and pons where only this midbrain is present so if you see in the case of diagram between thalamus and between pons where only this midbrain is present okay this midbrain consists of two parts ventral part as well as the frontal part that's nothing but ventral part is nothing but back part back region of the midbrain i can't draw the back region of the midbrain right we can draw the below or else upward region of the midbrain but we cannot draw the backward region of the midbrain so you have to understand by yourself so this ventral region is nothing but back region of the midbrain and that back region of the midbrain or as the ventral region of the midbrain is composed with nervous tissue which is called as crura cerebrae where it is also called as cerebral pedunculus and the front region whereas the front region you know dorsal region of the midbrain consists of four rounded lobes and that lobes are called as optic lobes and that uh, within that four optic lobes two optic lobes helps in the functioning of the you know functioning of sensing of vision and another two optic lobes helps in the functioning of hearing you know sensing the hearing and this two these two optic lobes together called as superior colliculi and these two optic lobes together called as inferior colliculi so this is about the midbrain in short so come into the hindbrain so normally in the hindbrain this hindbrain is also called as robencephalon and here in the hindbrain it consists of cerebellum pons veroli and the medulla oblongata so if you see in the case of diagram what i have said you hindbrain consists of cerebellum so this is the cerebellum it consists of pons veroli and it also consists of medulla oblongata so these are the parts which are present in the hindbrain so let us discuss about each of the part so come into the first one cerebellum and this cerebellum will get divided into two regions of hemispheres called as cerebellar hemispheres so i have said you that there are two cerebellar hemispheres right so each of the cerebellar consists of three lobes each of the cerebellar consists of three lobes one of the cerebellar hem consists of three lobes and another cerebellar hemisphere also consists of three lobes and those three lobes are anterior lobe posterior lobe and flocular lobe so these three lobes consists of anterior lobe posterior lobe and flocular lobe and these three lobes also consists of you know these are the three lobes and next the white matter of the cerebellum consists of uh, you know the, the white matter of the cerebellum is called as arbor vitae and it occurs like a branching tree and this around with this around this arbor vitae around the gray white matter gray matter is present you know if you see in the case of diagram so, so what i have said you in the hind brain the white matter is called as arbor vitae right so this uh, you know the pencil region which have, the pencil mark region which i have drawn is known as arbor vitae think it is a white matter and the gray matter is nothing but the white region which i have left over you know that which is surrounded to that arbor vitae which is white matter you know this gray matter and this arbor vitae is white matter that's what i have said you that's what i have said you right here in the white matter this white matter which is called as arbor vitae it forms like a branching tree and remember that is a white matter you know like this a branching tree it occurs like a branching tree and that is called as arbor vitae so this arbor vitae is surrounded with a gray matter this remaining region which i have left over is known as gray matter so this is about the cerebellum so now let us discuss about the pons veroli so coming to the about the pons veroli normally this pons veroli consists of transverse nerve fibers it consists of transverse nerve fibers what is the main function of the transverse nerve fibers it mainly helps to connect each of the cerebellar hemisphere because i have what i have explained you in the previous video sorry in the previous Uh, you know explanation what i have said you the cerebellum will get divided into two hemispheres there are two there are left cerebellar hemisphere and right cerebellar hemisphere right and that cerebellar hemisphere will get connected with this nerve fibers and there is a pneumotaxic center also in this pons veroli which mainly helps in the functioning of the respiratory muscles you know sensing of that respiratory muscles which of the signals which will be passed by the respiratory muscles will be received by this pons veroli only so coming to the third one medulla oblongata so we have discussed about the cerebellum pons veroli and now let us discuss about the medulla oblongata so normally this medulla oblongata is the posterior most part of the region of the brain and it extends from the pons veroli so if you see in the diagram this is the pons veroli and this is the medulla oblongata so we can name it so we can define it as a, it extends from the pons veroli and continues as a spinal cord so if you see here, this is the spinal cord right it continues to the spinal cord okay and it consists of a dorsal vascular fold which is known as posterior choroid plexus and it also consists of cardiovascular and respiratory centers and it also helps in a, a controlling or a sensing the swallowing vomiting coughing sneezing and hiccups like that and it also consists of foramen magnum so what is the main function of the foramen magnum is that uh, you know the medulla oblongata will passes to the spinal cord right and that functioning will be maintained by this you know that joint will be maintained by this foramen magnum only for example for if you see here in the diagram so this medulla oblongata will be passed towards the spinal cord the spinal cord right and this will be maintained by the foramen magnum so here the foramen magnum will be present which mainly helps in the jointing this medulla oblongata and the spinal cord so this will be the diagram of the brain 
so if you see this is the diagram of the brain and normally this diagram consists of lobes region of the brains and the parts of the brain as well as deep explanation you can see only by the seeing the diagram itself so thank you for watching this video guys notes for this topic will be given in my whatsapp group and the link of that whatsapp group will be given in the description box so you can join in my whatsapp group and you can ask notes there so i'll provide you notes there so thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box i'll clarify your doubts immediately thank you